Hello everyone, my name is Antje and um, since I am the last speaker today and I know everybody must be a little bit exhausted from all the drawing. Uh, hello Marla, nice to <laughs> uh, meet you all. Um, so I decided to do a very meditative drawing today um, and we're talking about the yin and the yang. And we're going to use the symbol of yin and yang, also known as the Tai Chi symbol. Just like a little bit of a special one, but probably everybody has seen that one before. So we will use that as a type of pattern for the drawing. So we will first construct that one. Um, if you wish to, you can of course use a... Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, compass for it. I'm not going to use a compass. I'm going to do it freehand because I feel in Neurographica it's very important for us to get away from the perfectionism. So uh, I'm just going to draw it freehand and I invite you to just draw with me and um, don't mind if it's not perfect. And actually, the little imperfections, they can have messages for you. So I invite you to just be open to that. But before we begin, I would like to tune into the energy of yin and yang uh, with a short meditation. I like to start my drawings with a meditation, especially if I guide a drawing. So I would like to invite you to just take a deep breath and exhale a deep breath and just settle in with yourself. If you wish to, if it feels comfortable, close your eyes for a moment. And that, let us just tune into the breath, into the breath and feeling the breath in your body flowing in and out. And actually through the breath, you can kind of observe these two forces of yin and yang in your body, in your life, through your breath. Having the inhale, filling your body up with air and having the exhale where you empty your body. And then also through the breath, we can learn a lot about yin and yang. As we see, for example, that they are intrinsically connected. There is no breathing in without a breathing out as well. So they are always together. They are like one, there are two sides of one coin. And there are two parts of a process, like our breathing process, for example. So take a few more deep breaths. And you can also observe if maybe one part of your breath is a little bit longer and one is a little bit shorter. And then what we can also learn from the breath is that Yin and yang really, they depend on the perspective you have. If you imagine, for example, you fill your body and it's full, that would be yang. And then you empty your body and it's empty of air, that would be yin. But if you look at it from the point of view of what your body does, then actually your muscles have to relax to let all the air in which would be yin. And then your massive muscles have to contract to push the air out, which would be yang again. So it is a very interesting idea to look at it from different viewpoints. And there you can see that yin and yang are really not concrete concepts. They're not um, stuck, <laughs> so to say. And they're not absolute. They can always change. So I will change my camera perspective, talking of change. And you can just take another deep breath and then we can just circle. 
So you can take a deep breath, deep breath. Very gentle, very slow. Draw a big circle onto your picture. And it doesn't have to be perfect, just as I said. And then just go around it a few times with like a neural line, a very loose line, until it feels more or less um, round. And then you want to find the center of your circle. And again, it doesn't have to be the perfect center, just how you feel it right now also. Neurographica is all about feeling into it. And then we go from here and make a half circle in one direction, going from the center to the outside. Then I'm gonna go back again. And I'm going to go right into the other half, completing the figure. And as you see, I, of course, don't do it perfectly, but it really doesn't matter. So what I would like to invite you to do today is look at your life in terms of yin and yang. We all have kind of ideas what yin and yang are. And they are always these complementary pairs, but they are also always on a continuum. And one really good description of that I learned from my Qigong teacher. He said, if you look, for example, at walking, now imagine walking, compared to just seeing also seated, walking is a very yang activity, it's quite active. But if you look at walking and compare it with uh, running, for example, it is actually a quite yin activity. It's very relaxing. So it also always depends on uh, what you use to compare the things with. So uh, we will look at all the activities of our daily lives and see if they are more yin or more yang. So most of the activities are never 100% yin or yang. And as we saw with the breath, they already hold the opposite in the middle. That's why we have these two circles that we start with that we're gonna just leave empty in the center of each of these small circles. And then I'm going to say that this lower half is my yin half and this upper half is my yang half. And I can already see that my yin is a little bit bigger than my yang. And that might be because that's what it is in my life. So I'm gonna start thinking of my everyday. So, I don't really get up super early in the morning. If you get super early in the morning, that would be probably quite yang because the morning time is where the energy rises. Um, I also get up in the morning, but not super early. So I'm going to make my morning circle into my yin half. You can write activities into your circle. I'm going to say get up late. Um, I'm just going to do it. As an example, I'm not going to write it in all of my circles, but you can do that if you wish to. So I kind of get up late. And then um, what is your next step? Like, how do you spend your morning? Ask yourself, do you have time in the morning? Do you like meditate, for example, or do you exercise? Um, like meditation would be quite yin. Exercise would be rather young. So you can draw a circle wherever you feel your morning goes. And then you can also look at how's your breakfast, for example. Um, do you just have a quick coffee? Is it like very quick, uh, no everything fast breakfast? That would be quite young. Or do you actually spend time? Do you sit down with a newspaper? 
and really enjoy the morning and then that would be rather yin uh, then you can ask yourself okay how do you get to work or when do you actually start working uh, do you sit in your car sitting is it quite yin activity so maybe uh, you also have a job where you're seated a lot. Oh, a lot of people have a quite sedentary life today. So that is very yin. Um, on the other hand, if you work on a computer and you look at your computer all day, it's a very strong mental activity. And the mind, the um, use of the mind and the mental activity is again quite young. So I'm going to make a big circle here because I just finished some paperwork that actually got me stressed inside. So anything that kind of um, gets your blood into flow, I'm going to write stress here. Um, anything that, um, yeah, lets your heart pump is always yang. So that could be a physical activity like going for a run or doing your yoga practice or uh, something like that. But it can also happen with something that doesn't look like a young activity to begin with, like sitting in front of your computer and staring at it, but you're so stressed out that your blood is still running and um, you're pumping so let's look further then for lunch. Like, do you have a quick lunch? Do you just like uh, eat on the run? Um, do you stand, for example, a lot? Um, or do you have time to actually sit down? Do you cook your own lunch? I always cook lunch. Luckily, I can work from home, so I have time for that. Um, but if you, for example, have a job where you're on your feet all day, that would be very young or a job where you to people all day where all your expression goes outward that would be very young as well so just see how your yin and yang kind of fills itself you can see i make circles in different sizes no some things are kind of bigger some things are smaller and if I have a small space, I just think, is there another small activity that I do that might be yin? For example, I drink a lot of tea. Tea is like a calming thing. So it would be yin. If you drink a lot of coffee, that would definitely be yang because it's hot, heating your body up. And as well, it's going to bring your blood into flow. So that's a yang activity. And you can also see that it's not really about one of them is better and one is worse or one is healthy and one is unhealthy. There are very healthy young activities, but also unhealthy young activities like stress, for example. There are very healthy yin activities like calming down, meditation. But then on the other hand, it's not very healthy to sit all day. So you can see that... Um, Yin and yang are really just two ways to see life through a lens um, that doesn't have to be judgmental. It does not say anything about the quality of it. And then let's go a little bit further. Maybe um, after lunch, but well, I, I get off work early and then I um, like to go and work in my garden which I found very relaxing so I kind of make a circle in the yin but I'm also going to make a circle in the yang because I'm going to be outside I'm going to be sitting in the sun heating heated by the sun no get some air get some sunshine on my skin and as I said, you can always like write everything in all the circles. I'm just going to make little examples here. Um, garden. And then in the evening, let's see. Do you exercise, for example? Do you wind off your day? 
do you take classes somehow? I love to dance. Um, that would be a young one. Because that kind of helps me to get over my daily seating. And I don't like to run, <laughs> so I do other things. Um, but you can find activities that harmonize and balance what you do. And this is what it's all about. So if you see now, and if you look at your activities, you see I still got some space there. So you can think of, okay, what is missing in my life? What do I kind of need to harmonize and balance what um, is happening in my everyday life? And you can balance things in all ways with the food that you eat, for example, with your physical activity, also with your mental activity, or with, for example, um, creativity. No, I paint. So painting for me or drawing, neurographica, uh, could be a yin activity. It could also be a yang activity. It de always depends how you use it and what you use it for. For me, it's very relaxing. So I'm going to put drawing in my yin. But if it's, for example, to activate your mind, it could also be in the yang half. So it's all about the perspective, all about how we look at it. And then, well, lately, we've all been kind of isolated, I guess. And isolation is very yin, being alone. But also, sometimes you need the alone time, no? So none of this is necessarily bad or good. But sometimes it's really nice to meet friends, to be in social circles, to do something with other people. I'm going to put people here. Um, I, at the moment, talk a lot on the phone. So that is kind of like my balancing to being so isolated and being so alone. Um, if you had a stressful day, for example, you could, um, well, as I said already, meditate. You could do breathing exercises. And there's many different breathing exercises. No? Some will bring you in a yin state and make you really relax, but there's also some that can really activate you, like um, the breath of fire, for example, that would be a very young breath. And that's the same with yoga. Yoga, there's a yin yoga, and there's also yang yoga. You could also do self-massage. That's what I like to do, and that's very calming, very relaxing. Or, um, well, if you have a rather sedentary lifestyle like I do, uh, you may want to do something that burns calories. Um, move, <laughs> movement is always good. But also like playing around. Oh, playing is nice. Playing is young. It's a good young activity. Playing with kids, especially um, laughing, being loud as well, or being quiet and not talking for a while. So just feel into what you need in your life and just observe where there might be um, there might be imbalances and then just think about how you can balance them how you can come back into balance just gonna add some more small circles here and there and think about little things that i can do like for example speaking is a very young listening is a very yin activity so why don't we listen to each other more sometimes and go on the yin side. I'm just gonna take a little break from speaking here because I feel very yonged out. And also I'm gonna, 
right here in one of the big circles sleep because that is one of the most important yin activities that we don't really consider an activity but it is so important in our life and now that we have this general structure and it's all full of ideas now let us connect them all with neural lines so what I would like to invite you to do is we go from the yin side to the yang side. And the way I picture that is that we receive the energy from our pen with our yin side and then we express it and release it and bring it out into the world through our young side. So the young is always what we express, what goes out, and the yin is what we receive, what comes in. So I'm gonna just slowly start, and you can really just take time with that and see where the line wants to go. And on the yin side, I'm gonna go through my circles. Yin is also kind of chaotic energy sometimes. So I'm going to create a little bit chaos in my circles there. And as you may have seen already, once I get to the yang side, I try to follow the structure that I see in the circles. Yang is very structured, very logical. Our logical mind, for example, is a yang aspect for us. So of course this doesn't have to be perfect. I may go through a circle here and there. And so I'm just going to slowly, slowly pass through my drawing now. And while you do that, I would like to invite you to just become observant and feel into this drawing now. Hopefully you could find enough aspects to kind of feel that you might be able to balance your life out, even if it feels unbalanced sometimes. And just feel it in your body, taking breath, just letting your breath flow, letting the energy flow. Ooh. And you can just take a deep breath and with the exhale go through your drawing and really just moving through these circles on the yin side and around the circles on the yang side. And actually we have this one circle in the middle that I'm going to go through and there's this one circle that I'm going to try to leave open, which is kind of tricky sometimes to remember that there's a little bit yang in the yin and a little bit yin in the yang always. Whew. So just become aware and let yourself be guided by those lines, see where they want to go. Tapping into the wisdom of your subconscious mind, of your intuition. And really just trusting the movement of your pen, following your hand. Breathing, always remember to breathe. Really now you can imagine how you can maybe feel just going into this meditative state. And never mind if it gets a little bit chaotic on the inside, that is just the energy that is there. And we just got to accept that. Things are not always perfect, not always as we plan them. 
Then once we get to the yang, we can try to follow the patterns that we create for ourselves. We can actually plan a little bit. And just keep moving through it until there's lines on all sides. And of course, we're cre creating a lot of corners here that want to be rounded in the next step. Just see maybe two more lines. <sighs> Breathing into it. <sighs> Just following this feeling. And now I will go into rounding out my drawing. And while you're rounding, you can really keep thinking, reflecting on what this means to your life. And really be honest with yourself. Where do you need more balance? Where do you feel out of balance? It's not a bad thing. You just need to find a way to get back into balance. And one thing that I learned throughout my life is that balance is not a kind of state that we achieve once and then we're in balance forever. Balance is like a dance. It is a constant readjusting. It is a constant coming back. Because balance is not on one side. And we never stay really in the middle. Life is not happening in the middle. Life is happening on the edges, sometimes more or less extreme but yeah most things just as yin and yang are not absolute balance cannot be absolute as well so we need to constantly be aware and just be aware that it's always possible to find balance if we go into kind of an extreme like for example sitting all day then we may have to work a little bit more to actually get back into balance. And we need maybe a lot of yang to balance out all this yin energy. We need maybe food or maybe teas or maybe a lot of movement that brings our body back into balance and that brings our heart back into pumping and the blood flowing and the muscles moving. A friend of mine once described it like a boat on the ocean that is constantly moving and you're trying to go with the waves and not have it um, skip to one side. And I think it's like that with everything in life. And the beauty of life is that we have all this possibilities in all directions that there's not just the one thing but there's two sides and everything they're always connected and always relational Whew. and while you're rounding really relax into it I know there's a lot of little corners now probably if you did draw like I did I may not even be able to round it all out but I'm just gonna try I'm just feeling into it we are on the yin side now it's time to relax into it to let it flow and to just let your mind 
move with the lines, flow freely. Without holding on to anything, relaxing, and letting go. Letting go is also a very important quality of yin. Whereas actively giving away would be a young quality. So you see, letting go can also be on both sides, depending on the energy that we give it with. And this is really something that I hope you will take from this, that I often see the description of yin and yang, and they're very absolute. You know, one is cold, one is hot. But nothing is really just cold and hot. If you have ice cold water compared to lukewarm water, okay, it's cold. But then if you see the lukewarm water compared to boiling water, it's not so sure anymore. It's all relational. It is no absolute. And that's the beauty in it. And that's how we can get back into balance, not thinking of the extremes, but thinking of all the little things we can do. And then it's not so overwhelming as well. It's not a problem. Well, even if I sit all day, then once I get up, I walk around. And even if I just walk compared to sitting, that is pretty good. That is like the opposite energy. And then I do some exercise. And then I drink some hot tea. And the heat is young as well. So it will heat up my body, my bones. Oh, I drink some coffee. <laughs> it's good for me. And if you have a very stressful job, then you may want to drink some chamomile tea and really relax, or even some passion flower. And it's not what other people say, it's really also about just how you feel about it. getting away from the judgment. And the right and wrong, it's not about right and wrong. It's about what you need in the moment and how you can nurture yourself in the moment and how you can get into a more balanced state. And a balanced state that enables you to do what you need to do in your life, to do what you love. No matter what it is, if it's your job, or if it's playing with your kids, maybe then you need some alone time every now and then, and then you can come back to them with even more energy. So it's all just about taking care of yourself, really self-care, and self-care can mean many different things for many different people. Whew. So just breathe into it and see what comes up for you right now. Letting your pen flow. And just rounding and rounding. Very meditative.
And I hope this is good for you after the whole day of drawing and thinking and probably being active in the mind. You can just relax a little bit. You can see that my inside really changes the shapes. Looks much more chaotic than the other one. And you can see it's a little bit darker, of course, because I have to brown so much and there's so many lines inside of it. The darkness being the yin concept. Light is the young. And we need both. Always need both. It is no day without a night. No summer without the winter. And to me, this is really the greatest wisdom. Masters just learn from the earth, just observing the seasons, the day, how everything changes. So yin and yang is really all about change. So all we need to do is just allow and facilitate change inside ourselves. And that doesn't mean to change one time and then stay that way, but to change constantly to actually make change our way of life. So that we can adapt to whatever comes. And if we have a year like last year where everybody's stuck at home, then maybe the next years will be so full of connections so full of talking and so full of meeting other people that you wish for another one like that. So we just gotta go with what comes, live with the seasons, slow down in winter, be more active in summer, and really just appreciate it as well. Appreciate this movement way in back, like the waves of the sea, like the tides. Everything has this pattern inside of it, this constant movement. Nothing is just in one state. Can we just keep going slowly? Taking your time. If you can't round it all before we get to the colors, that is totally fine as well. Then you can just come back to it later, taking your time. And if you just need to jump up and move, Go and follow your urges. I think this is really something that we need to learn to listen to ourselves, to really find out what do I need right now? Not what does society tell me after a stressful day, maybe 
going to the gym or having a workout or going to this hot yoga class might not actually be what you need. Maybe you need something that's way more relaxing. Or maybe after a day of sitting in front of the computer, meditation might not be what you actually need. Maybe you've got to run or dance or sing. So I think it's all about finding your own way, your own balance. Nobody can give that to you. You can only find it for yourself. And it can be different from moment to moment. Of course, for a lot of us, Neurographica brings a lot of balance into this life. In terms of being creative, expressing yourself, but also in terms of relaxing, letting go of things. But then also, we can create with it can plan into the future, we can project things, we can plan creating structure. So as you see, there's yang and yin in everything and we can use it in the way we need it. And I'm going to slowly get ready to color a little bit before we leave for today. Just running a little bit more. <laughs> that is one thing to get away from the perfect perfection. Just being with what is instead. So I can make this perfect plan, make my young plan, but then I have to deal with the chaos of reality, the confinement of time, and just soften into it and soften into what is possible right now. Without stressing myself. This is not supposed to be stressful. This is supposed to be relaxing right now. Oh, don't forget to breathe, taking a deep breath every now and then. And you can really use your breath to always remember. You can tap into this energy of yin and yang literally with every single breath you take in life and see where it goes. How, how does it feel to fill yourself with air? How does it feel to let go? I'm gonna draw a few more lines in this little yin circle that's in my young, just to make it more obvious. This is the little spot of chaos that is in the order here. It's also good sometimes to bring a little bit chaos into the order to spice it up. Oh, when our life becomes bland, boring. Oh, when it's all just about money or the career, bring some heart into it. Bring some different energy, always looking for the difference, always looking for the opposite or just looking at it at least. 
you don't have to embrace every crazy thing just because it's the opposite, of course. But sometimes it's good to look at the other perspective. And it can also help us to understand other people's perspective, the way other people see the world. Because their experience, their everyday experience might just be so different from ours. So yin and yang can really help us to understand and take the world as it is without needing to change it, without needing to adapt the world, but we can adapt to it. We can find ourselves in it. So I think I'm good to go with color now. So what I was thinking, I'm going to use cold colors for my yin side and warm colors for my yang. The Chinese, they sometimes use water and fire as synonyms for yin and yang. So I'm going to make the yang side kind of fiery, and the yin side kind of water-like, just to emphasize it a little bit more, make it more obvious. And I'm going to start with the yang. And if you have words in your circles, of course, you can kind of activate them, activate these activities with the color. And just slowly moving through the picture, seeing where the color wants to go. And you can, of course, choose the color completely intuitive as well. Just feel into it and feel what do you need right now. This is often how I choose colors, especially if I draw something that is a little bit difficult maybe. Then I will always ask myself what color will make me feel good right now. And here I'm asking myself what color will make me feel super hyped up and activated because I want to push my young. I want to make it stronger because I have already such a strong yin. So I'm going to go and make it super nice and red, glowing. Maybe put some yellow in, make it shine bright. Oh, young is all about bright, shiny, light colors, warm colors, and yin, cool colors, and dark. That looks almost like a rising sun. Make it a rising sunset. And I'm leaving this circle in the middle because it's going to have the other colors, of course. So you can, of course, just color single circles, but I always like when the color flows through the picture, really. And then I'll use some orange as well. Adding some more fire into it. And you don't have to color everything. Of course, you can always leave white as we do that in Neurographica. You can use white as a color as well. Maybe some more red here. And 
And I always just usually start with one color and then see how much I need of it. And just really feeling into it. I always color completely intuitive. Not always, but often, very often. Very usually I do the coloring very freely. But with this one, of course, I kind of follow the pattern because I want this effect of having the two sides meet and having them kind of obvious as well. So that I'm gonna be reminded of all the things I was thinking about now. Maybe the ideas that I had. And I want to be reminded like how much energy all this yarn can give me. So whenever I feel kind of sluggish and slow, I know where to go and know what to do next. And you can do this run or sit on the bicycle and do this exercise. I'm going to also color my yang circle that is inside the yin area. Have it nice and warm. And then I will continue with the yang colors, uh, with the yin colors. And choose some blues. Very cool colors, dark, like the night sky. And again, just feeling into it, following the shapes where they take me. And there might be even an area where they kind of mix, where the blue goes into the red, becomes purple. Purple is my favorite color, so that is perfect. <sighs> and while you color, also keep observing how does it make you feel? Where do you go with your mind? Where does this take you? What journey is this for you? And how different does it feel from the other side? And now that I'm here in the yin, if you have to breathe more. I actually want to go slower, but I'm kind of gonna keep the pace up because of the time. But yeah, I feel like I would, <laughs> need more time to do this as slow as I need it. But I'm just gonna go with it right now. Getting some turquoise in here, nice and cool. And whenever I feel heated up, whenever I feel stressed, I can just go to this place and look at my yin side, see all the things that I can do that will get me back to this place and that will kind of balance out the heat, the stress, the fastness of life and bring me back to a moment of relaxation. If I can slow down. Yeah. Take some purple as well. It's like the ocean now. Really like that. And then, if you want, you can draw some field lines through there. I'm not gonna. Um, make a fixation here with my drawing. 
so there's nothing really the shape is already there it's the hole that is important so maybe i would emphasize the entire circle the entire figure but i would not like we do in many drawings in neurographic anomaly choose um a result or something that i want to hold on to right now kind of feel that it needs to be fluid like that but if you feel that there's fun activity or something that you were drawing right now that it's very important to you and that you really want to remember you can make a fat circle around it i'm gonna go in here draw some more in there and as i said draw some field lines through it if you wish to just feeling into it know where they go i may just draw one big fat line a last final line before the end going in the middle because this is kind of the place i want to come back to every now and then not to stay there but just to remember it and this is our yin and yang drawing and um maybe do another field line now i feel like making more big lines <laughs> finding other ways through it but yes yeah, so thank you very much everyone that joined us for this session i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you feel kind of relaxed now maybe if anybody wants to write me a feedback i'm very thankful for it and if you want to just keep drawing and stay in the state of meditation of relaxation please stay there and um thank you so much i may um yeah i'm just gonna leave it like that Come on, maybe.